You know how some babysitters take you to the movies or rollerblading in the park? Mine brought me along on a date with the serial killer, Patrick Bateman. Not my idea of a romantic evening. God, I mean, look at her. All drugged up and tied to a chair. I knew we should have gone to the movies. At first, I was scared. I wanted to get out of there as fast as I could. But then, something came over me. As soon as I was free, I got really pissed. I mean, he was about to make a real mess of my babysitter. So I did what I believe many of you would do in similar circumstances. I took matters into my own hands. And it changed my life forever. Is everything all right in there? Thought I heard a crash. Yes, everything's fine, thanks. They found Bateman and his final victim a few days later. The FBI quickly uncovered a psychopath and a few extra unsolved murders on him, and he became an instant celebrity, an overnight sensation. I think they even wrote a book about him. Only in America. As for me, I was never tied to the scene. And rather than self-destruct or spend the rest of my life on some shrink's couch, I told no one of what had happened. I silently vowed to devote my life to stopping other psycho killers. I couldn't wait to grow up. We can stop if you want. No, no, I just, uh, I just don't, um... What, you don't have any? Listen, don't worry, um, I'll take care of everything when the time comes. Oh, the old pull out and pray trick. Great, a renaissance man. Wait a sec, wait a sec, um, uh, the, the, the convenience store down the street, I'll, ju I'll just go down there, I'll, I'll, it's right around the corner, it's really convenient, and I'll get some, I'll get tons. Wait, wait a minute, what am I saying? My, my roommate, my roommate has got tons of them, like drawers full of them, I mean, it's like a prophylactic factory. Are we done here? No, no, we're not done. Just wait here, I'm gonna walk down the hall and get some from a friend. Oh, oh, great. Just... Just make yourself comfortable. Sure. Okay. Great. I'll be here. For her pleasure. Yep, I just killed Brian. But you gotta look at the positive side. I'm killing for a better tomorrow. Once I get into the FBI, I'll be in the position to stop dozens, maybe even hundreds of serial killers every year. Let's talk about Ted Bundy for a minute, shall we? What kind of a killer was he? How was he perceived? Mr. Laws wishes to participate. Please, let's hear it. He was perceived as a very organized killer, very calculated. <laughs> you don't agree, Ms. Newman? Yes and no. Come on, this guy planned each and every detail in advance. He chose victims with extreme accuracy, he stalked them meticulously and waited for the absolute precise moment to attack. All while maintaining an air of patience not even the FBI's greatest could penetrate. No offense, sir. None taken. Oh, but I still don't agree. <laughs> On top of that, he picked all his dumping sites ahead of time with the utmost caution. 
He was unquestionably an organized killer. Premeditated with a capital P. Capital P? P, it's a letter in the alphabet. <laughs> Between the O and the Q. You have something to say, Miss Demon? He started out organized, but spiraled downward late in his so-called career. He began to keep bodies for days, meticulously washing their hair and even applying makeup before disposing of them. And he littered the dumping sites with evidence, using the utmost caution. However, his last victim and his youngest girl ever fell out of his typical victim selection. She was chosen out of sheer availability, the sheer need to kill. He was both an organized killer and off the charts lunatic. Oh, with a capital L. You're right. He was both. Very impressive, Miss Newman. Now, Professor Starkman, how would you classify a killer whose downward spiral was actually calculated into their grand scheme? Well, that's a very interesting hypothesis, Miss Newman. Unfortunately, in this class, we stick to the facts, and there's no known case study of that nature. was totally unacceptable. I mean, it's the day before Starkman announces his new teaching assistant. This could be catastrophic. I wasn't about to watch years of hard work go down the drain. It was time to pick Keith's brain. You know that warm feeling you get when you realize that there are people out there just like you? It almost makes you feel normal. I mean, all this time, I thought he was taking notes. But no, look at his work. His sketches, they're absolutely brilliant. This may be a waste of a rare mind, but a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. What are you doing? Shh. Just relax, Bobby. What's wrong? Don't fuck with me. That necklace. And Cassandra's dress. It was a present. Bobby, don't you remember? You gave it to me. Stop it. This instant. I said go home. I mean it. I have a confession to make. I've had feelings for you for a long time now, Bobby. Longer than you could imagine. I've always wanted something to happen between us. Something beautiful. I love you, Bobby. What? You please don't be upset, Bobby. Stop calling me Bobby. OK, I'm, I'm a little confused. You're confused. How do you think I feel? Rachel, Miss Newman, this is unacceptable. Oh, it is. But it was okay for you and Cassandra. How did... I don't know what you're talking about. Please leave. Kat, I've always loved you. Ever since I first saw you. Before Diane ever loved you. Before Cassandra ever loved you. Before Clara even ever loved you. It was always me. Kat, don't you get it? How do you know about Clara? It was six years ago. I was there, Bobby. Clara was babysitting me that night. Clara, I was here. Do something. I was in Bateman's apartment.